All right. Yeah, I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. I'm not giving you advice based on uh, a book. I'm giving you real world experience from my own successes. So, any techniques I ever discuss with you for the rest of my life will be covered under this very disclaimer. Let's get on with it. So tonight I want to talk about marketing. For those of you who are out there, like Colin who, and, and a Don who wants to buy himself a house, probably what you're missing and what you're going to need to be doing is marketing. You have to market for houses, right? You have, to, you have to do something to get your phone to ring so you can find some houses, right? Okay. So this is my I Buy Houses store in Hatboro, which I since closed. I got a little tired of sitting in there during the year of COVID, where nobody walked in for like 12 months. Yeah, and I started talking to myself, and some weird things were happening. So I, <laughs> I had to close the store down, <laughs> right? It's up for sale if, uh, if say, you own a, a mortgage company called Cornerstone Mortgage. <laughs> You could probably buy this building. It's half a million dollars. I'm sure you know where to find the freaking money. <laughs> okay? Why do you call it Cornerstone anyway? Do you like corner people and throw stones at them until they sign the app? You know. All right. So this building's for sale for half a million dollars. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that anybody go out and buy themselves an I Buy Houses store. But it's funny, when I first opened the store, the leads used to come walking in. I had a tremendous year, made a couple hundred grand in the first year. And then over the years, of, uh, I was there about five years. Over the years that I was there, the leads seemed to get uh, less and less. And then the COVID year just freaking killed it. All right. So there's a guy. You can find him on YouTube. His name is Chris Chico. Anybody here ever heard of him? Okay, I know Larry has because Larry used to use them, and I used them as well. So, well, Chris Chico, just look for his uh, YouTube channel if you want to learn about what he does. So, he creates essentially um, Facebook, digital Facebook ads for you, right? And they're pretty effective. And what he does is he basically will charge you for a region. So, you can buy a region. Guess what a region is? Philadelphia is a region. Now, when Larry, Larry grabbed Philadelphia before I could, right? And then later, and they told Larry that he had an exclusive right to Philadelphia, right? I called up Chris Chico. He was, had no problem giving me an exclusive right to Philadelphia. <laughs> it was kind of like the laws of nature that exist in Larry's office. <laughs> Apparently, there can be more than, you know, three, four, who the heck knows how many people had exclusive rights to it? Regardless of the fact that he was not exclusive, and he was saying he was, I can tell you that the ads worked. Okay? What they typically do is they'll put a picture up of a house that's for sale, and it'll say something like, if, in my account, it would say, Phil buys houses. And the house was so ridiculous looking. You know, you could see a giant bow in the roof, right? It looked like the, the roof was going to fall on the person's head like tomorrow, right? But this is what they did to grab attention. People would look at those ads because these houses are just ridiculous looking. Like, you're like, nobody would live in that house, right? And what also happens with these ads is because they look, the houses look so stupid, People go on and just start commenting on it. Yeah, like these investors are all thieves. Yeah, we're all thieves because there's a picture of one house probably taken in Oklahoma with a roof that's bowed, right? This is the w kind of stuff that people comment on. So if you do ever hire Chris Chico and use his digital Facebook ads, don't get upset if you see negative things being written about you on Facebook. Just laugh it off. Because in my opinion, what Chris is doing and where his genius comes from is he creates these ads that create that kind of negativity. It gets people to write posts. It gets people to make comments about what kind of idiot would live in this house. And it's, it's all to gain attention to get leads, okay? 
if you do get a legitimate comment on your digital Facebook ad from Chris Chico, sometimes a legitimate person will be interested in you buying their house. And they might write their phone number or their email address, and you can just swipe that by checking your ad from time to time. And you can, con you can have a conversation with them right there on the Facebook ad, or you could have a conversation with them with direct messaging, or you could just call them or whatever, okay? So it, it does work. And it's actually pretty convenient because you'll get, I think you get an email from it too that lets you know that somebody has inquired about selling you their house, okay? There's a bunch of YouTube videos that explain how the whole program works. And then you can just call Chris and you can book, book a digital Facebook ad with him. So I know that it worked for my wholesaling company when I was in the wholesale business. All right, so I already mentioned to you, this is kind of what one of the ads look like, right? And in this case, he's writing Chris buys houses, but you can put your name into place, and that's all it really says. Your phone number is not displayed or anything, but the minute somebody comments on it, the minute anybody uh, clicks on it, you get the lead from that. So this is a, a, a way to get leads. It's not the only way, it's just a way, and I want you to know about them. Okay, so uh, I've explained most of what's on this slide already. So let's get to this. So um, one of the ways that I like to contact people is I like to call them, all right? So I make phone calls myself. This girl is a VA that I got from the Philippines. All right, I'm, I'm lying about that, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's just, I, I wish she, if I'd still have that hat bro store if, if she came in and worked next to me. Let me say that, okay? All right. So um, there's a lot of different services out there. If you don't like to call people, if you're not comfortable calling people, you can pay people to do this. It is not terribly expensive, okay? Five Nine is a company that has a contact center and a call center. They'll call you by the list, so you might go on to list source, for example. And you buy certain kinds of leads. Maybe you're looking for people who are in pre-foreclosure, for example. And you buy a list of 3,000 names on a pre-foreclosure list, and then you give this list to your uh, VA, virtual assistant, for those of you who don't know what that is. You hire this person. She lives in the Philippines, so she's working for a, a very small wage, probably something like $4 an hour. And you can have these people, a lot of people in the Philippines, they speak very good English. And when they call America, they sound very credible. Okay, they sound good. And you would have to work with your VA. You'd have to teach your VA to make calls. You'd have to do mock calls with your VA. You'd have to do some work to train your VA. If, it was, if this was the VA, I'd fly her in to have her. <laughs> but, 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 um, so you work with them, you train them, you teach them. And when they're ready, you give them the list of the 4,000 leads you just bought, and you have them call them, right? A lot of these contact centers, they have some pretty great, sophisticated software. So uh, the phones that they use record all the calls. So if you get a lead from Eric Milnes, Eric Milnes wants to sell you a house, right? You could go back and listen to the entire phone call that the VA had with Eric. And now, you know, first of all, it's a good way to just check to make sure that your VA is doing a good job. But more importantly, you, wanna, you can read the notes that the VA sent you, but you can also go back and listen to the whole phone conversation, which is really cool, okay? Because she might have missed something. And if she did, I wouldn't fire her. I wouldn't, okay? <laughs> Log me in rescue is another one. It's the same kind of thing. Ring Central is another company out there that does this. If you go on Google and just Google them, you'll find 25 more of them, okay? These are all different kinds of companies that are out there. Um, <clears throat> there's also other companies that do things like uh, CallRail, for example. CallRail is good if you're putting out bandit signs. You can get a bunch of different phone numbers, and the phone numbers can be a, so say Eric was going to go out in the middle of the night, I have no idea why he would ever do this, 
He would go out in the middle of the night and put bandit signs on telephone poles in Philadelphia. By the way, if you get caught doing that, there's a $100 fine for every bandit sign that you have in your car, right? So let's just imagine that you're not going to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning without having three, four, five hundred bandit signs with you. If you happen to get pinched on the very first pole, you got yourself a heck of a fine coming, right? Well, whether or not you ever have to pay Philly, that's a whole other topic, okay? But um, the, the, there's a lot of different things out there related to phones, companies that will give you a bunch of different phone numbers. And one of the things I might do if I was putting up bandit signs, I might say to Eric, Eric's not going to put the signs up himself anymore. He's going to hire people to do it. So if he hires George, he's going to give George f a thousand bandit signs with a certain phone number on it. He's going to give Mia a thousand bandit signs with a certain phone number on it, right? He's going to give John a thousand signs with a different phone number on it because this family does everything together. They sit together. They freaking are on Zoom together. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. All right? But they're obviously a tight family. So they're going to be putting up bandit signs together. You just know it, right? Right? I'm not getting George is tall, so he's going to hold up the sign. Me is going to hit the stapler, and John is going to tell him to get the hell back in the truck so we don't get arrested. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's keep going. So another marketing service that I've used uh, as a real estate investor is yellowletters.com. Is anyone going to comment that the letter's pink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pink. What the hell, Phil? What are you, freaking colorblind? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These, these little postcards are some of the cheapest postcards you can ever buy. And I think they're cute, and they grab your attention, and they work. Now, the weird thing about it is they're also using people in the Philippines who handwrite these things. That's why, and they're all in the fourth grade. That's why they have these <laughs> little arrows and pictures of houses and stuff. But they obviously know what they're doing. They do to some purpose, and it works. There is not a professional wholesaler in Philly who doesn't have yellow letters postcards in his rotation at some point. Marketing, you got to change it. You can't just make one thing and send it out all the time. It gets boring, right? So you have to try different things. When the one thing isn't working anymore, you got to shake it up and try something else. So <coughs> these I've had a lot of success with. At the time I was buying these, a couple of years ago, they were like 42 cents a postcard, and that included the postage. So it was like very, very cheap. I don't know what it is today. <laughs> this letter on the right that is orange, this is from a friend of mine who at one point was a, a very big wholesaler in Philly. He probably still is. He has two first names. You never want to trust a guy who has two first names. I just want to point that out. I'm off on a sidetrack for a minute, OK? Anybody here got two first names? Uh, well, let's hear it. Oh, yeah. No. You, All right. <coughs> this guy with the orange letter, he used to put up so many signs in Philadelphia. He had a crew of illegal aliens who would go out in cars and put these signs up everywhere. And he put them on every single telephone pole in the bad neighborhoods. You could be driving 75 miles an hour and you can still read the signs. Okay, right? Because there was another one coming. It was, it was like one of those cartoon books you make with a memo pad, right? There was just so many of them everywhere. The city was supposedly doing everything they could to lock him up. They, as far as I know, they never got anywhere near him. They never got near him, okay? This, th th these two things here are freaking awesome, right? This company... Uh, whoever these people are who made this, I don't know who did it. Obviously, it was a wholesaler. What he did is he, he made his uh, I Buy Houses postcard 
look exactly, exactly like a Philadelphia traffic ticket, right? With the envelope and everything, right? <laughs> so, <coughs> and he would put them on people's cars. Now, is it easier to put something on cars than it is to go up and down the steps of all these houses? Hell yeah! Let's go to like a concert stadium or man music center, walk around and put 25,000 of these out in a couple of hours, right? And you don't have to worry about getting pinched for banded signs or have to deal with drop-dead gorgeous VAs in the Philippines. You won't have to do any of that, right? All you had to do is walk around, stick this underneath windshield wipers. You could dump a whole box of 20,000 with a couple of people in a very short period of time. Now, most of them are going to hate you because the thing looks like a speeding ticket or a traffic ticket or a parking ticket, but who the hell cares? The ones that are looking to sell their house are going to call you. Right? So this is a, a really good technique, I think. The city of Philadelphia, just to tell you how stupid they can be, is those traffic tickets. You want to know how I found out about those? Somebody put it on the front page of the Inquirer. Not that anybody reads that rag, but they put the pictures of, of the front envelopes and the ticket. And like, I'm sure, like, now there's like 5,000 guys in the city doing this, right, because of, of that. So yeah, good job, like way to, you know, take a marketing piece and put it on the front cover of the Inquirer. Nobody will copy that, right? Yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, I've always liked this postcard here, this red and yellow one. I don't know who this guy is. Uh, he's not from Philly, I don't think, because his phone number is like a 1-800 number or 804, I don't know, maybe that's a toll-free number. But I liked it because it's square, so it's completely different from everybody else's postcard. He used these two colors that don't work together. Oh, I know, let's make it yellow and red, right? Uh, it just stands out. It's a pretty well-written card. And if you, you know, <coughs> if you like it, you should take a picture of it before I flip the page. This cash thing is another guy who copied off of my buddy who the city was going after. But these are all just examples of what you can do. Okay? This postcard, unfortunately, I didn't have... Phil, yeah. can you go back a slide? There was a few people, so i trying to get a picture. Sure. Aiden, go ahead. Tick tock, tick tock. Camera, click Three. on camera. Two. All right, this next card, it looks like it's gray, but it actually is printed with black letters and yellow. And it's designed to look like you're being evicted from your house. <laughs> right? And if you read the, the message, it's on here. It'd be easier to just take a picture of it, and you can read it later. The guy who developed this card, his name is Richard Roop, R-O-O-P. And... <coughs> Real, he used to charge real estate investors $12,000 to come to his seminar. He was going to eventually, he was going to teach you about wholesaling and then give you this card. And I can tell you that we had a lot of success with this card. We used it for years when I first got a hold of it. I'm going back to like 2010, 2011, 2012, back in that, back in that time frame. We would take this card, and we would go up to the screen door. You're not allowed to stick things in people's mailboxes, right? But you can open up their screen door and put this letter in, uh, in between the screen door. And I would sometimes, if I was out delivering them, walking from house to house, you'd see somebody park their car in front of their house, and you'd see them go, and then they're walking up there, and they're all pissed off, right? thinking like that they're being evicted from their house or something. You know, it's just all fun and games. You might as well have a good time doing this, right? So this, this postcard, we used it for years, and the reason we kept using it and we kept printing it, once you get the copy of it, you can just print as many as you want, right? You just get a printer to print it for you, and you copy the language that's on here. Our real estate investment company is interested in buying your property. The funny part is you, you read it, you grab it, because on, let's see if I have a picture of the other side of it. This is, <coughs> this is a similar thing. Urgent notice about your property at 4407 Shellmire. This is actually my property. 
So some uh, used to be my property. I sold it because I don't own anything in Philly anymore. But the, the picture at the top, this is urgent notice. I got this at my house, right? But they were trying to buy one of my houses in Mayfair. So they can look at the tax records and figure out where I live and send a postcard to my house. And, but they're saying they want to buy 4407 Shellmire, which is a rental property I used to own. Now, obviously, I'm not calling any of these people back because I'm already a wholesaler. I'm doing the same thing they're doing. It's just funny. So I get these things all the time sent to my house. And I read them, and I look for the best ones. This is where I get the marketing from, right? When I come here and do presentations on marketing, all I got to do is like wait another two months. I'll get 14 other examples of marketing that I could bring in to show you. But these are the better ones. Attention, time to sell. Get cash for your house fast. Call me now, right? And uh, so there's different versions of Richard Roop's card, but it's same thing. It's like yellow. Everything he does is yellow. It's supposed to look like an eviction notice or some kind of notice from a utility company that your electric's going to be shut off, right? It's designed to scare the crap out of you. Um, this one here is just another example of a letter. Uh, some guy named Duke Morrow wants to buy my house. That's a tough, that's a tough name. Duke Morrow wants to buy your house. Discounted properties in Sarasota. These were letters I got in Sarasota. This letter was one I just wrote by hand. You know, it's funny. So a lot of these postcards, let's see if we can find an example here. If anybody's using handwritten, like these are designed, right, with a typeface that makes it look like it's handwritten. It occurred to me, huh, that's good to have it be handwritten? Well, I'll just write one then, right? So here's a way you can make things like this really cheap. Sit down and hand write what you want to say. So I think this is a really good one. I write, be the first in your neighborhood to act. If you take a minute to read this, I can save you $20,000 in wasted fees. Plus, I'm going to give you a $500 gift. OK? So what's the $500 gift? A free gift of a $500 Amazon card will be awarded to you at settlement. And the $20,000 I'm going to save them is because they're not going to need a realtor. OK? And it's not real a tour. It's a realtor, okay? If you are a realtor and you call yourself a realtor, you need to go to a DACA tour. <laughs> and you need to get your shit straightened out because there's something wrong with you if you cannot pronounce your profession, all right? I just thought I'd throw that in. So uh, I wrote, my family's been in the house buying business since 1989. Uh, we have an I Buy Houses store in Hapro on 309. Maybe you've seen us. And then I, I, I make like a Ben Franklin tea bar, and I just wrote, working with us, no repairs, quick close, fair price, solid close date, pay no commissions, flexibility, no hassles, deal direct with me. And then on the other side, if you're working with a realtor, it's uh, seller repairs, contract contingencies, price uncertain, close uncertain, you pay commissions, property showings, and dealing through agents. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people who, who will call you, people who call your marketing, there's a reason why they don't want a realtor to list their house. Can you think of a few? How about, here's the biggest one, I think. They're embarrassed by the look of their house. They are embarrassed. They do not want you in their house. They certainly don't want a slew of realtors coming in the house with clients seeing the way that they live. All right? But they might let one real estate investor in because it's only one person. If I come in by myself and I get their house under contract, they never have to show their house to anyone else again. And believe it or not, there are people who would leave $40,000 on the table just because they're embarrassed by their house. That's one of the reasons. There are other reasons, you know. But I would say that's a big one. Okay. This picture stinks, but this guy, he's cool. His name is uh, Kenny, 
can't remember his last name. Kenny Powers, Kenny Rushing. Kenny Powers is the guy from Down and Out and what the hell was that show? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kenny Rushing, I think that's his last name. He's a, a, an investor in Tampa. So look at this ad he runs in the paper, right? This is, a, this is like a full page ad in the paper. Rehabber Superstore, cash in three days for your house, right? So he's advertising he'll buy your house. But he's also selling these nine houses. But there was more than nine on this page. So this guy is like buying so many houses, he took out a full page ad in like uh, one of those flip newspapers, right, in Tampa, because he's marketing like more than nine houses, and he's also getting leads from this ad, right? So he's a clever guy and he's the real deal. Uh, I've met him a couple of times and he's a real piece of work. And it's, it's just another way. It's just another way, right? Another way, you'll look in our parking lot, okay? I was one of the first people, I, I, I'm not the first guy to wrap my vehicle. I was the first guy to buy a Nissan black pickup truck and wrap it with the red letters, I buy houses. Uh, then a business partner of mine bought one, then Larry bought one. Of course, he didn't buy a Nissan, but he bought one very similar, and that's his truck. Then I bought the Beamer and wrapped that. Now you go out in our parking lot, and we got quite a few of them out there. We got four, I think four of them out there, five including mine, professionally wrapped, plus Larry's had six professionally wrapped. We got some young people that got stickers on their car. Somebody else who rode I buy houses with a bar of soap. <laughs> hey, I love it. If the shit works, that's the cheapest deal in the whole parking lot, right? If anybody calls that car, right, that's a great idea. So these are some of the things that you got to be doing, okay? Also, there's other kinds of deals that you can go after, okay? Like, for example, probates. I personally have not put a lot of money into chasing probates. I'll tell you why. Every time I heard, I, I, I got a lot of tentacles. Everybody knows I'm in the real estate business. And everybody should know you're in the real estate business. If everybody doesn't know you're in the real estate business, you're not doing a good job of screaming to the world what business you're in. You want a quick and easy way, go buy a hat that says I buy houses. Go buy a t-shirt that says I buy houses. Wrap your damn car. It won't be long. Trust me. Everyone in your neighborhood is going to know what business you're in, including the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to live right down the street from where the police in Warminster park their cars. So, like, if I blow a red light, all a cop has to say or all anyone has to say is, oh, that guy, that guy with their red I buy houses car blew a red light. It's not like every cop in... They actually like drive past my house to park their personal car to get the cop car to go out and run their shift. So they drive past my house and see my car at least two, three times a day because there's three shifts of police every day. It's not like I'm going to ever be able to hide from them if I, uh, if I have a hit and run or, uh, or something like that, you know. All right, probates. I've stayed away from them. I'll tell you why. For example, I got a phone call. A guy who has a, owns a house right behind me, he passed away. So I immediately, you know, did what any caring person would be. I ran over there in my business car, right? <laughs> right? Hey, look, this guy lived right behind me. He didn't ever even freaking say hi to me in, in 25 years, okay? He was, a, he was a miserable old whatever. So... That's fine. He wants to be miserable. He wants to be like that. I'm cool with that. You can be that way. So I ran over there with my postcard, with my uh, business cards. I was going to stick them in his mailbox, put them underneath his doormat, right? You know, stick them in between the screen door, whatever I could do. I go over there. Guess what I see? There's like 20 pieces of marketing already over there. Okay? Right? And this is not the first time that I've seen that. People buy a list of probate on a regular basis, and they're constantly mailing them. I personally have not had any success with it, I, so I am not big on it, but this is an example of a good probate 
a good probate letter. May I offer my condolences on the passing of whoever it was. I realize this might be a challenging time, but I wanted to contact you to see if I could possibly be of help. It's not bad, not a bad written letter, okay? My name is Victor, and I provide services that may be of benefit to you. The reason I am contacting you is that I understand that your property may be coming up for sale. And they go into the rest of the story, okay? I think that these letters, especially in this super hot market that we're in right now, probably not worth it. But it doesn't mean that it won't be worth it again soon. So it is a strategy and something that you may want to consider. It might work better for you than it did for me. So don't just think it won't work just because I said I haven't had a lot of success with it. Just any house, I've been to probably a dozen houses where it was a probate situation and there's always more marketing there then just wait till somebody dies if you want marketing examples and just go to that house and they'll be they'll be wet from the rain and they'll be all over the place all over in Philly you'll see them like they're falling out of the mailbox like a popcorn machine right it's all over the place but uh, you get marketing examples there and you some of those guys are ham and eggers but some of them are professionals who know what the hell they're doing like some of the postcards I showed you tonight Okay, so let's talk about a couple other ideas. Sometimes, okay, so a couple of years ago, there was this app called Deal Machine. It, the app still exists. We had tons of problems with it. Uh, Larry tried it for a while. He paid a guy to go around, and the way Deal Machine works, you pull your cell phone out, you take a picture of the house. The program has a GPS. So it automatically knows that you're at 123 Main Street, right? You take a picture of the guy's house, and then you can have the app, you go back to your computer and you can tell the app, send a postcard to this house with a picture of his house on the postcard. Okay. Right, okay, so guy gets, I buy houses, we buy houses, she buys houses, he buys houses, what the fuck? There's a picture of my house on there, right? They're going to stop and look at your postcard. They're probably going to call you up and yell at you. Say, who the hell are you? Well, what are you doing taking a picture of my house? Did you have permission to take a picture of my house? That kind of stuff. You're going to get their attention, okay? The problem with Deal Machine, well, let me tell you what else Deal Machine does. It will track where you drive. So it's pretty cool. Say you go to Willow Grove, for example, and you decide, today, I'm going to work in Willow Grove. You will drive up and down every street in Willow Grove, and it will make all of the streets that you drive down highlighted. And you will be able to hit 100% of Willow Grove before lunch easily. You, you don't have to take a picture of every house. You drive around looking for a house that needs buying. It's got a blue tarp on the roof. It's got 14 newspapers in front of the front door. It just snowed and nobody's shoveling the driveway. The lawn hasn't been cut in two years, right? These are all signs that this house needs buying. So you drive around looking for the most dilapidated, most screwed up, hoarders issued, tree fell on the house, the more screwed up, the better, right? And you take pictures of those houses. If you're already there, you could park your car, get out, and knock. And maybe you'll get lucky, you'll have a conversation with somebody. Maybe they, they scream at you and tell you to get the hell off their property, but, you know, that happens too. You have to be open to that. You have to be willing to have that happen. Okay. So, that's what Deal Machine does. It's pretty cool. If you... For example, want to buy a house. Say Colin wants to buy a house, okay? Colin's a young guy. He's got a lot of energy. Colin, have you ever considered driving up and down every single street in Bucks County? Yes. Good. What are you waiting for? I do it. Okay. So this is what Andrew says. I have not used Batch Driven. Did, didn't Batch Driven change their name, Larry? I think so. 
Okay, I thought was Batch Driven the program that you were pitching for a while? I'm not sure. No, no, you're talking. No, you're talking about Banner Season. Yeah. Mailbox Power. Mailbox Power is totally different. Okay, mailbox okay, Power cool, sends letters. Cool. So Batch, according to Andrew, I have not used Batch Driven, but Andrew, I got this screenshot off the review, off of their website, and what Batch Driven does, I believe is exactly the same thing as Deal Machine does. Some of the problems with Deal Machine was you're driving around in Willow Grove, you're halfway through Willow Grove, you notice you just drove down four streets and those streets are no longer highlighted. So what happened? I don't know. Maybe it had some kind of glitch in the software that maybe it ultimately got fixed. Maybe it didn't get fixed. I don't know because I'm not using it. But I was paying my son to drive around all of Bucks County, all of Montgomery County, right? And think about that. It's powerful. I mean, imagine if you had somebody who would drive an entire county, and you could actually go on your software program and see that he drove up and down every single street in that county. It's pretty interesting, right? Talk about covering your county. That's a good way to do it. So this is something you can do with it, okay? Um, you can drive by any home and take a picture. You could take a picture of every single home. I wouldn't recommend that. That would be very expensive, all right? You could not even use their postcard service. So if, for example, you set the system everywhere to take a picture, a postcard gets sent to that house. I forget what they charge you for that, but you're going to pay. You got postage, plus you got to pay for the postcard with the picture on the card. They got to produce it. So I think it was like a buck seventy-five or something every time you did that, so it's expensive. But what you could do is you could just take a picture of the house, and you could have the system tag it as a house you're interested in. Okay? And then you could go to yellowletters.com and use a 42 cent postcard and send them that postcard. Now, would that postcard have a picture on it? It may or it may not. I'm not familiar with Batch Driven's software. I never used it. Okay? Another thing it can do is you can skip search the list. So let's just say you're out there driving around and you took pictures, you did all of Bucks County, and it took you and another driver, it took you three weeks to drive up and down every single street in Bucks County. You're going to have a list of a lot of messed up looking houses, right? You might have 500 houses, right? You can skip search them all using Batch Driven's software. You could skip search the whole damn list, which would mean now you have their name their phone number, their sister's phone number, their old address, what company they work at, and it depends. Okay, I haven't seen uh, Batch Driven's skip search reports, but some reports give you a little bit of information, enough to make a phone call and find out what the heck's going on. Other ones will give you massive amounts. So skip searching programs range from terrible to tremendous. All right? You can mail them all. You drive the entire county, okay? The other thing I would talk to you about is one of my mentors, Jack Miller. Jack Miller said that all you need is 4,000 houses, okay? And I still today, Jack has left this earth quite a while ago. No, I didn't send him a probate letter. Um, <laughs> Jack's theory was pick a neighborhood that you really like, right? Pick as many neighborhoods as you can find up to 4,000 houses. And these 4,000 houses are going to be the only houses you're ever going to market to for the rest of your life. Think about that for a second. So let's just say you, you took batch-driven software and you drove your racetrack of 4,000 houses, wherever that may be. Typically speaking, you want to pick houses in neighborhoods where the houses are relatively cheap, where you live nearby, where you would want to own houses, where you might even want to live, right? Because if you just focused on 4,000 houses, you're probably going to end up, over the years, owning many houses out of those 4,000 houses, 
right? It's a really clever, simple idea, and I think it makes all the sense in the world. And what the idea behind it is, if you're so intimately familiar with the houses in these neighborhoods, you're going to know if it's a deal immediately. You're going to get on the phone with somebody. You've already done uh, 15 deals in that neighborhood. When someone calls you from that neighborhood, you're going to look at a picture of their house right away. You're going to know if that's a good house to buy or a bad house to buy. You're going to know exactly what value that house should be purchased for. You're going to know what you can do to it to fix it up and sell it to somebody else in this room because you're such an expert on your neighborhood. Really clever, simple idea that nobody does and it makes all the sense in the world.